Good day, grade eight. This is Sarah van Green and AKA Mr. VG and I'm excited to be with you today. This is video two in our series of videos discussing the geometry of triangles. Today, we are specifically going to look at the theory of triangles. So all the different statements and reasons and axioms and things that we use to solve problems relating to triangles. What is a triangle? That's my first question to you. Please be careful of using definitions like it's a three-sided shape, so duh. No, it's not just a three-sided shape. It actually is a three-sided polygon, which means, now you might say, so the polygon, well, a polygon has to have straight edges, as well as it must be closed. So in other words, this is an example of shapes that are polygons and shapes that are not polygons. The top one is a polygon because it's got straight edges and it is closed. But the bottom left one is not closed, therefore it's not a triangle. The one bottom right is also not a polygon because there's one side that's kind of all wiggly and squiggly and things. So it's not a triangle. You, now your question might be, but sir, do I really have to be so pedantic, so full of nonsense? Yes, because for us to work with triangles, we need straight edges and closed shapes. But let's dig into the actual theorems that we are going to use in this video. So the first one is maybe your first introduction to what we call an axiom or an accepted truth that has no proof. So it is something we accept, but we don't really know why it is like that. We just see it is like it, it is the way it is. It's like that, and that's the way it is. Now I sound like a rapper from the 80s and 90s. But when we talk about an axiom, you actually have a lot of axioms in your life. Things you were taught when you were young, but you don't really know why. You just believe it is the way that it is like it. It's like your parents have raised you and they've told you certain things are acceptable and certain things are not. Why? Well, we sometimes never even find out until we get confronted with situations where, where it's not true. So let's quickly have a look at the first axiom. The first axiom says to us that if I've got a triangle, the sum of the interior angles of a triangle always add up to 180. We call that supplementary, when a set of angles add up to 180 degrees. What makes geometry different from other chapters is that for every statement you have to give a reason. So in the exam, if you use this axiom, you must actually tell the examiner or your teacher it's interior angles of a triangle. So let's look at our second statement or our theorem. So here we get to a theorem. What makes a theorem different is it is a statement that has to be proven or that has been proved to be true. So look at the difference between an axiom and a theorem. An axiom, there's no proof for it, but a theorem, it has been proved. So when we look at this, the first theorem says that if I take A and B and I add it together, it adds up to the exterior angle of that triangle. In other words, angle C2 is angle A plus angle B. But please remember C2 has to be an exterior angle of a triangle. So what's going to be our reason we give for the examiner? It's simply going to be exterior angle of a triangle. 
please, please, please be careful. It doesn't, C2 is outside, yes, but it's not just any outside angle. It has to represent a flag. I like to use a flag so that you see it is that line AC that's extended. Now I'm going to draw two angles outside of the triangle that are not exterior angles. The first one and the second one, both of them are not exterior angles of a triangle because that line breaks or that line breaks. It's not a straight line. So please, please, please be very, very careful. Let's go on to our next theorem. Our next theorem has to do with isosceles triangles. Now for this, we are kind of going to look at the previous video. The previous video said that if I've got an, a length of a side, it always relates to the size of the opposite angle. So if I've got two sides that are equal in length, their opposite angles are also going to be equal in size. That's an awesome little thing, an awesome little idea to play around with. So I've got two options. Either I am given that the sides are equal. So AB is equal to AC. What's then going to happen? Well then, angle B and angle C is going to be the same. But so you just said that. I know, but look at, look at the order in which it is given. First I'm given that AB is equal to AC and therefore Angle B and angle C is the same. What reason are we going to give the examiner? Why is angle B and angle C the same? Because it is angles that are opposite equal sides. But I can flip it around as well. And this is now awesome because we're going to talk about something we call converses. And not the sneakers you not those sneakers you wear, you know. We're not talking about the sneakers. We're talking about a converse in terms of a theorem, which means I swap my, my two statements around. So I could say, but in option two, now I'm looking, what if angle B is equal to angle C? But if angle B and angle C is the same, then also the sides opposite them are equal. So in other words, AB must be equal to AC. I cannot stress for you, ladies and gents, how important this is. Because it gives me a tool to actually prove the length of sides equal to one another. Come grade 10, 11, 12, you are going to use this theorem a lot, a lot. So isosceles triangles are like super important. But what would be the reason for our second option? Well, now we would say the sides are opposite equal angles. Look at the difference between the two options. The first one says angles are opposite equal sides. But the second one says sides are opposite equal angles. Please Look at them. Your teacher might be very, very, very strict on this. Okay, especially if you are in a public school, a department of education school. Please be careful. Your reasons has to match what is happening in this sketch. Now let's quickly look at our next triangle. Now we are going to look at equilateral triangles, meaning all three sides are the same, and therefore all three angles are the same. But why 60, 60, 60? It goes back to our axiom. Our axiom says that the interior angles must add up to 180. If the three angles are equal, then it has to be 60, 60, and 60. So in other words, the reason we are going to give the examiner or our teacher 
is going to simply be equilateral triangles. Whoa! This was a long video. But thank you for staying with me. Remember, we've got four things that we looked at. First of all, the axiom. Then our theorem about the exterior angle. Then we looked at the isosceles triangle with both the options. And then lastly, we looked at equilateral triangles. This is it for, for this video. This is Mr. VG signing out. Watch our next video where we're going to start practicing all of these theorems and how they apply in your different options and solving problems. And man, it's going to be fun. So tune in. Keep well. Cheers.